as God loves the world, so we are to love one another in thankfulness for our salvation from all that holds us in bondage. Mm -hmm. Let us start the service with a call to worship. Jesus calls us to wash one another's feet and serve one another in love. We come to glorify the Holy One. Jesus invites us to eat and drink with him and remember him in all that we do. We come to the feast with joy. Jesus commands us to love one another and show the world that we are his disciples. We come to be the body of Christ and know ourselves as his disciples. Voices United 589, Lord, speak to me. We are going to sing. Do you pray with me? Ever gracious God, we come this night bearing within our lives the hurt of a broken world. We come with dry oh, and thirsty spirits. Remind us as we break bread of our need and your sufficiency. Heal us as we drink of the cup of your forgiveness. Draw us nearer to each other and to you in your covenant of faithfulness. And as the night advances, by your grace, O oh God, deepen in us the knowledge of your steadfast love. Through Jesus the Christ. Amen. The second hymn we are going to sing, Voices United 635, All the Way. My Savior leads me. Grace for every joy. 
Now let us do a prayer in silence for a while, meditating on the love and story and passion of the cross. Let us give our compassion to God. Compassionate one, your ways will lead to life. You call us to love one another and bear one another's burdens. But when we disagree with one another, we want to be right more than we want to follow you. 
you call us to serve one another and then kneel at each other's feet in humility and grace. But when we are hurt by another, we want to strike back more than we want to forgive. You call us to pour out our lives for the healing of the world. Forgive us for acting as if your gifts were for us alone, when you gave up everything that all might be blessed through your sacrifice. Amen. Now, may you going to give us God's word. Let us hear in our heart and soul. The scripture reading is from Exodus 12, verses 1 to 51. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A year old male, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals, and all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I will pass over, I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. Where I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations and shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses for whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day shall be cut off from Israel. On the first day, you shall hold a solemn assembly and on the seventh day, a solemn assembly. No work shall be done on those days. Only what everyone must eat, that alone may be prepared by you. You shall observe the festival of unleavened bread for on this very day, I brought your companies out of the land of Egypt. You shall observe this day throughout your generations as a perpetual ordinance. In the first month, from the evening of the 14th day until the evening of the 21st day, you shall eat unleavened bread. For seven days, no leaven shall be found in your houses. For whoever eats what is leavened shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether an alien or a native of the land. You shall eat nothing leavened. In all your settlements, you shall eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, go, select lambs for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop 
dip it in the blood that is in the basin and touch the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood in the basin. None of you shall go outside the door of your house until morning. For the Lord will pass through to strike down the Egyptians. When he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over that door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you down. You shall observe this right as a perpetual ordinance for you and your children. When you come to the land that the Lord will give you, as he has promised, you shall keep his observance. And when your children ask, what do you mean by the observance? You shall say, it is a Passover sacrifice to the Lord, for he passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt when he struck down the Egyptians, but spared our houses. And the people bowed down and worshiped. The Israelites went and did just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the prisoner who was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of the livestock. Pharaoh arose in the night, he and all his officials and all the Egyptians. And there was a loud cry in Egypt, for there was not a house without someone dead. Then he summoned Moses and Aaron in the night and said, rise up, go away from my people, both you and the Israelites. Go worship the Lord as you said. Take your flocks to your herds, take your flocks and your herds as you said, and be gone and bring a blessing onto me. The Egyptians urged the people to hasten their departure from the land, for they said, we shall be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leavened with their kneading bowls wrapped up in their cloaks and on their shoulders. The Israelites had done as Moses told them they had asked the Egyptians for jewelry of silver and gold and for clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they let them have what they asked. And so they plundered the Egyptians. The Israelites journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth, about 600,000 men on foot besides children. A mixed crowd also went up with them and livestock in great numbers, both flocks and herds. They baked on leavened cakes of the dough and they had brought out of Egypt. It was not leavened because they were driven out of Egypt and could not wait, or had they prepared any provisions for themselves. The time that the Israelites had lived in Egypt was 430 years. At the end of 430 years, on that very day, all the companies of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. That was for the Lord a night of vigil, to bring them out of the land of Egypt. That same night is a vigil to be kept for the Lord by all the Israelites throughout their generations. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance for the Passover. No foreigner shall eat out of it but any slave who has been purchased may eat of it after he has been circumcised. No bound or hired servant may eat of it. It shall be eaten in one house. You shall not take any of it. You shall not take any of the animal outside the house and you shall not break any of its bones. The whole congregation of Israel shall celebrate it. If an alien who resides with you wants to celebrate the Passover to the Lord, all his males shall be circumcised. Then he may draw near to celebrate it. He shall be regarded as a native of the land, but no uncircumcised person shall eat of it. There shall be one law for the native and one for the alien who resides among you. All the Israelites did just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. And that very day, the Lord brought the Israelites out of the land of Egypt 
company by company. The second scripture reading is from John 13, verses 1 to 38. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from his world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own were, who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off the, his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I'm going to, I, you do not know now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You, shall call, you call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but it is to fulfill the scripture. The one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I tell you this now before it occurs, so that when it, it does occur, you, be, you may believe that I am he. Very truly, I tell you, whoever receives one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this place, this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, do quickly what you are going to do. Now, no one at the table knew why he said, he said this to him. Some thought that because Ju Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what you need for the festival or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now the son of man has been glorified and God has been glorified to him. If God has been glorified in him, God will, come, will also glorify him in himself 
and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I'm going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have loved for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterwards. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. Here in the reading of the lesson. Thank you, May. Now, the promises of the Old Testament, Exodus 12, and the New Testament, John 13, has been fulfilled and revealed within us. Therefore, Ebenezer brothers and sisters, let us make a respond to the world. Let us gladly accept it as follows. God of memory and hope, God of Exodus and Calvary, as you led the Israelites into a new life of freedom, lead us into a new life of loving service as we hear your word. Fill our hearts with love and our minds with understanding. We give you thanks, gracious God, for leading us out of bondage to our self-centered lives and for feeding us with the bread of your salvation. Amen. Let us pray in silence one more time, desiring God to come to us and reshape our center. We are going to sing another hymn, Voices United to 86, if you will trust in God to guide you. Straight. 
I invite all of you to the Holy Communion, carrying a vision of creation healed and restored. We welcome all in the name of Christ. Invite you to the table where none shall go hungry. We gather as Christ's guests and friends. In Holy Communion, we are commissioned to feed as we have been fed. Forgive as we have been forgiven. Love as we have been loved. The open table speak of the shining promise of barriers broken and creation healed. In the communion meal, wine poured out and bread broken, we remember Jesus. We remember not only the promise, but also the price that he paid for who he was, for what he did and said. And for the world's brokenness, we taste the mystery of God's great love for us and are renewed in faith and hope. Let us sing another hymn, Amazing Grace. It is right, good, and joyful thing always and everywhere to give our thanks to you who led the Israelites out of bondage into freedom, who commanded them to keep the Passover as remembrance of how you saved their firstborn from death and how you brought them out of the land of Egypt. And so, with your creatures, honors, and all the heavenly chorus, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy One, God of power and might, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed the one who comes to your holy name. Hosanna in the highest. Christ be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give our thanks to the Holy One. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Amen. Holy are you, and holy is the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who taught us how to love and serve one another, who poured out his life for the healing of the world. On the night before his death, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, saying, take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, now you may receive God's body in your place. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup offered thanks and gave it to the disciples, saying, drink from this, all of you. This my life in the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Ebenezer families, let us take his gracious gift. And so in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Please repeat after me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. Let us pray one more time. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a full taste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal realm. Give us your mind to think with. Give us your light to see with. Give us your heart to love with. Give us your joy to light up the world we work and live in. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Before we close the service, we are going to sing More Voices 212, sent out in Jesus' name.
We are called together here on Zoom tomorrow to watch with Christ, to meditate on Christ's suffering and faithfulness. In preparation, I ask everyone to clean up your place as a symbolic action to invite God to your place and keep in silence if it is possible until we gather tomorrow. Go now in peace. Do not be afraid, but fill with courage and hope. For the light of the world goes with us this night and forever. Now let us go into silence. 